morning families. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit about washing dishes. We just cut up a banana and although we have a dishwasher in our house, I think it's a really functional skill for our kids to be able to learn how to hand wash dishes. So that, we'll just wash these up real quick. So if your child hasn't hand washed dishes before or is not familiar with your sink, it's a really good idea to have them explore your sink. Um, our sink has two halves, a left half and a right half. Our left half has a stopper that looks like this. So having your child explore both the sides of the sink, the base on the sink, but also this, and how you put the stopper into the drain hole and turn it to the right to be able to tighten it and make the water stay in the sink. So even just having your student turn on the water onto the cold and having them turn the dial to the left to make it drain and the right to make the water stay in the sink. On the right side of our sink, we have a disposal and it has a sink stopper that's the black plastic kind with the rubber seal. Okay, having them explore this right side of the sink and learning where to put the stopper, okay? And learning that the flanges that lead down to the disposal, they should not put their fingers any farther in than that. So again, having them put the stopper in, take the stopper out, stopper in, and with cold water, being able to see that it fills the sink up, and then take it out and drain it. So sometimes that concept development takes a little while for our students because students who have regular vision are able to observe these things. And if your student has low vision or blindness, that has to be intentionally taught. So we're gonna go ahead and put our stoppers in. We're gonna start to fill our sink up. So we're gonna start with our cold water, okay? And moving it slowly to warm. We never want to start with hot or warm. We don't want anyone burned. Okay. And move slower to hot. Now, as we just have a few dishes, we don't need a ton of water in this sink. The left half of my sink is much larger than the right half of the sink, so that I don't need to have a ton of water in either of them to wash, but it will take me a little longer to fill this left side up. And that's important information if your sink is uh, not symmetrical either. So when we fill the sink up and add soap, it's typically easier for our beginning kiddos to start using a, um, a soap that's smaller like this size instead of a larger one like this, even though this is more economical, this is easier to manage. So teaching them to open and close this lid is another step. So when we're adding soap to the sink, use a tablespoon and put our finger inside the tablespoon, locate our finger with the soap and begin to fill it up until the liquid touches our finger. At that point in time, we know that we have enough soap on the spoon to be able to add it to the water. And then that spoon just goes right in the soap with it. Okay. So fill the right side of the sink up, starting on cold and moving our faucet until it's warmer. While we're doing that, it's a good idea to get your equipment around. So I don't have a dish drainer, but I am going to use a kitchen towel. I'm gonna open it up and get it ready. So we're gonna get our dish rag, okay? And we're gonna put our items into our soapy water. So we also have a plastic knife and a table knife. As these won't cut our skin, we're gonna put them directly into the water. But I also have a nylon knife. This is serrated so it will cut your skin. So this needs to stay right on the edge of the sink and will be washed last. That should never be submerged in the sink. We're gonna get our rag wet. And we're gonna wash this cutting board first. So we're gonna start at the top left corner and we're gonna do a grid pattern, moving left to right, and then down, and then right to left, down, then left to right until we've covered the entire surface. And then we're gonna start up in this upper left-hand corner again, and we're gonna do a grid pattern vertically. So we're gonna start in the upper left-hand corner, Okay, we're gonna go down, move over to the right, move up, move over to the right, down, over, 
up, over, down, okay? Until we've got all sides. We're gonna use, do the sides of the cutting board, okay? Including the handle. We wanna make sure that we get in there. We don't want any food stuck in there. And we're gonna repeat that grid pattern from left to right first, and then from top to bottom. And then we're gonna take our hand and we're gonna check all of the food contact areas to see if we can feel any food. If we can, we'll put it in our sink to rinse. And then either in our dish dryer or on our dish towel to dry. And we will do the spreader that we use to cut the banana. We're gonna wash all of the food contact areas and the handle. And again, we're gonna check all the surfaces to make sure that we can't feel any food left on there. If we do, we just need to come back and scrub at it again. Okay, it's really important to get in all of these joints where the blade and the handle meet. Okay, same with our fork. I'm gonna wash the handle, get in the tines. It's very important to get in between the tines. We're gonna determine by checking to see if we can feel any food or anything stuck on the surface of our fork. The plastic knife handle and then the blade, making sure that our washcloth is over our hand we want to build good habits so that we are not making sure that our skin is in contact with the blade of that knife. Our table knife, okay. Need to do the handle. Make sure our washcloth is over our fingers. Okay, and then we're going to scrub the blade. Again, we're reinforcing those good habits. Last in our sink is our spoon that we use to measure our dish soap. Okay, our handle and the food contact surface. And then again, we're checking to make sure that we have all of the food particles off. All right, so now we're gonna use our nylon knife. All right, we're gonna submerge it, but we're gonna keep our hand on the handle of the knife the entire time. We do not wanna lose track of this. We don't ever wanna reach into a sink with a knife and accidentally grab the blade of the knife. So we're gonna put it in there, okay? Scrub the handle. Okay. Make sure our washcloth is over our hand before we start washing the blade. Okay. Now when we check for cleanliness with this, we need to be very careful. We need to keep our hand par parallel with the blade of the knife, not ever perpendicular. Okay, so check our handle, gently check our blade, turn it, handle, gently check our blade. Now when we move to the rinse side of the sink, we wanna keep our hand on the handle of the knife. Okay, so merge it, rinse it off, okay? But we never wanna let go of it. We never wanna lose track of that, okay? And when we are washing cutlery, we're gonna put it in the drying rack. We wanna make sure that we always put our cutlery in the same place every time so we know where to anticipate it and we're not ever surprised by the blade of that knife, okay? So we're gonna put it at the top of our dish towel, blade facing away from us. Okay. We're gonna let that air dry, okay? It's important to teach our kids to squeeze out their dish rag or their sponge when they're done to allow it to dry. Okay. And then to leave it in a place where it will dry out completely and not create mildew. At my house, we keep it on top of the faucet so that it doesn't get wet on the uh, divider between two halves of the sink. Okay. And then we're gonna turn our sink stopper to the left to drain the water. And then we're going to pull the sink stopper out on our right side of the sink. Okay. And making sure that we organized and putting our stoppers in the same place every time. I hope this was helpful. 
and please let me know if you have any questions.